Recently, I was talking with a couple of friends about Squid Game. They are among the few people left in the world that still haven't seen my video on the topic, so they didn't realize uh, my thesis about Squid Game was that it's an allegory for capitalism. Well, my thesis and the thesis of the guy who made it. I asked my friends what their interpretation was, and I found their choice of words interesting. They saw Squid Game as representing society or culture and how we compete with each other and so on. They weren't wrong, but I thought their answers were lacking something. Like most people, my friends didn't see our situation as the product of specific historical forces. They didn't see the daily violence of the political and economic system we live under as part of this system, but just as part of normal human interactions, the way society has chosen to evolve. To me, their language spoke of a life of being conditioned to see temporary historical phenomena as normal and natural and voluntary. I think a bit differently. I've studied politics and history and how power works for 20 years now, so while I might be biased and wrong like anyone, at least I've got 20 years of perspective to offer and plenty of book recommendations if you like. I wanted to make this video so that my friends and anyone else watching could use language I think would be more accurate and thereby understand our situation and how to solve it a bit better. I don't see the violence represented in Squid Game as some inevitable product of human nature and society. I think our current plight is the result of imposing a particular system on most of the world, and that things will be better in the absence of such a system. I want you to see what I see. I'm Chris, and this is what had to be said. Before I make the case, however, I should recognize today's sponsor, the new University of Austin, where we'll be putting all your favorite right-wing TED Talk professors who love the word truth. It's a veritable who's who of people who give the shine of science to mainstream propaganda. Can't wait to get my PhD in cancel culture! Anyway, the topic of this video will be pretty basic to some of you, but the point of this channel has always been to educate beginners on this subject. I don't care how many views I get as long as people learn. In my head, my audience is usually the people around me that I talk to every day, and what that means is I focus on the basics. If it seems to you like I'm just swapping one vague term, society, for another, the system, you're right, I am, and that's okay, because they're very broad, complex phenomena, and not everyone agrees on the definitions. So I'll explain the two terms, see if you agree. Society is humans interacting with each other. It could be in a tiny egalitarian band or giant hierarchical civilization. All societies have some way of making decisions and resolving conflicts and disputes, and all societies have some measure of shared beliefs which form their culture. By contrast, a political system is imposed on a society. A minority of the population controls and benefits from a highly organized group called the state that forces the rest of us to work for it. The reason the distinction matters so much is the assumptions behind the different words. We're talking about the difference between humans in general and people in specific, temporary, artificial circumstances that can be reversed. So when I'm talking about the political system or the economic system or systems of power or systems of oppression, what am I talking about? Well, there are different ways of looking at it, but when I talk about the system, again, I mean a set of institutions that exist to concentrate power, to rule us, and to keep us ignorant. And I want to underline that. The system I'm talking about exists primarily for the purpose of concentrating power and wealth, which means taking them away from you. 
it uses different justifications and methods in different places, but everywhere it results in the rule of a few people who control the system, a ruling class, over the rest of us. Rule means imposing laws on people. Laws set up the entire social system. It was laws that turned feudalism into capitalism, for example, and now legislatures all around the world pass laws favorable to large corporations. Rule also means living off the labor of others. You'll see in all countries, everywhere ruled by a state, the majority of people work, and a small minority get rich off their work. Maybe through taxes, rent, owning corporations, proximity to power, or a combination. That's a class system. Rulers and ruled, or owners and workers. All these systems make it impossible for everyone to rule or own more than a house full of possessions, so the majority will always be forced to work for the minority, even, even if it means, you know, making up bullshit jobs for them. So far, the system includes the law, so obviously the government, which makes the laws and takes taxes, and things created by law and taxes, like bureaucracy and money and the corporation. I would also include all the means of propaganda. We absorb propaganda from the news, from corporate PR and advertising, but we learn the foundation in school. We're taught myths and lies about how these institutions work, and most people never learn to question them. I only did because of a lot of reading and listening to people. One thing I'd like to repeat is this system is not a timeless, inevitable part of human existence. It's very specific to our time. Society has always existed. Institutions of power, like money, police, racism, and borders, have not. The system has evolved from simple slavery in Mesopotamia 7,000 years ago to the globe-sprawling corporate empire we live with today. But it's really easy not to notice it. Because while the main tool the system has to force you is law enforcement, in other words, legions of people with guns, possibly even more insidiously, it controls your mind. And that's where propaganda comes in. Propaganda makes the whole system invisible. After all, most people don't know what I mean when I'm talking about the system or the state or capitalism. Everything is normalized. It doesn't even have words sometimes. So nothing is questioned. People don't realize they live under a system, just like fish don't realize they live underwater. Only by identifying the system and considering what it actually does beyond the rhetoric can we begin to understand it. One way you could do that is by contrasting its promises with its results, not just debunking lies. Anyone with internet access can do that but to look at the justifications for the institution, and then look at its results over time. Another way to think of systems is as a series of processes. Millions of decisions are made every day, so the system's not static, but always moving and changing. A capitalist system, like the one we live under, works primarily to keep the processes of business going. So naturally, it's against the law to stand in the way of those processes. Whether you're a CEO doing something that might lower the rate of profit, activists protesting big banks, or indigenous people trying to stop ecological catastrophe, you're a criminal and the police will try to stop you. I think it's important to understand the system as a whole, to look at its history and the effects of concentrating power, but it also helps to understand its interlocking parts whether they're formal institutions like police and bureaucracy, or intangible forces that sustain oppressive systems like racism. Some people want to be activists and change the world, but don't grasp the vastness of the system. You might say class society is the real problem, so we should deprioritize racism. Or, racism is a much bigger problem than ableism or misogyny. You might go, fat phobia? Psh, I don't care about that. But you should. These are all problems inherent to the system. People spend decades 
banging their heads against the wall of elections and political parties or giving money to charity, only to find the same problems keep recurring. We've been taught voting and petitions and donating money are the only legitimate ways to change the world. It's propaganda, and we can unlearn it. Another result of a limited understanding of the system is to underestimate the power of systems like law and culture and money on individuals and overestimate the importance of individuals. Not that people's individual choices don't make a difference, but others in the same circumstances might have done something similar. People end up blaming a few people they've heard of, like the president, George Soros, Bill Gates, and so on, without having learned where these people derive their power from. Only systems of violence could create this kind of wealth and impunity. We think it's all normal because, again, we've been raised on propaganda. Propaganda makes us feel guilty for doing things for ourselves, like taking a break from work. That's because propaganda claims a monopoly on morality. It will decide for you what's right and wrong. Work is right, even if it contributes nothing and you hate it. Not working is wrong, and you should feel bad if you're not constantly making money. Propaganda teaches us we should follow the law, even if we don't believe in it. We should pay taxes, even if we disagree with how they're spent. We should always defer to authority, even if they're wrong. The only legitimate ways to get things done uh, are to go through the political system itself. Mm. Even if the system never does what we want it to. The system creates racism, nationalism, patriarchy, and ableism, because the more division and hierarchy, the better it is for the people in power. Propaganda gives us enemies, from Muslims to trans people, to divide us further and keep us confused as to who the real oppressors are. Propaganda is the first thing we need to unlearn, because if our thinking is limited to the system, the solution will always come back to the system. Stop climate change? We need a law and higher taxes. Or we need to make it profitable so a corporation will save us. But working through the system like that wouldn't solve anything, because the system exists to prevent change. If you didn't know that, it's easy to confirm. Think about which reforms you think should be passed to improve the system. Then ask why, in hundreds of years of parliamentary tradition, those reforms have never been passed, ever. Why, why would that be? Well, it could be because they would take away the power of the people who run things. The first step to unlearning propaganda is learning to see things for what they are. I used to think of police as simply part of the cultural landscape. Now I realize they're enforcers for the state, and their job is oppression. I used to think government was buildings and papers and formal processes. Now I see it as a vehicle for empowering the few to rule over the many. Unlearning involves a lot of asking why, and a lot of figuring out that the people you thought were authorities are mostly full of shit. But another essential step in unlearning is to realize the attitudes the system has inculcated in you. It's one thing to think a government is illegitimate. It's another to realize no one should rule over anyone. There are a lot of people on the left who've long ago learned to see certain elements of propaganda as self-evidently wrong, like the idea that states go to war to liberate people, but who still cling to the basic assumptions of propaganda, like states can be democratic and serve the people, or we need hierarchy and police, or everything, or everything would just turn to chaos. To really unlearn this stuff, we need to realize no one has the right to rule over others, whatever knowledge or intentions they have. There's no way to rule people for their own good. But we don't realize that, because we've been brought up to believe our own good was precisely the reason for systems of rule, and they're just broken. That's not what I find. All of the supposedly successful revolutions also have so far just 
repeated the patterns of tyranny in new ways, because not enough revolutionaries are committed to changing more than the people occupying the seats of power and the color of the flag. I often spend the last part of my videos talking about solutions, but only very broadly. For now, don't worry about it. If my arguments in this video are new to you, don't worry so much yet about what the solution to all of this is. It's normal to ask questions like that and to ask what will replace this system, and the short answer is nothing. What would you replace slavery with? How about freedom? The absence of slavery? What would you replace racism with? How about no racism? I've made lots of videos with longer answers if you're interested, and there are links in the description, but your short-term goal should be understanding how these systems work and unlearning everything they've taught you about themselves. We need to become new people with our minds on liberation, reinventing ourselves, and transforming the culture. 